Hi guys, so I know yesterday's lesson was kind of challenging, so I wanted to give you a second chance to make sure you understand the idea of finding that regression line and calculating residuals. And what we're going to do in this little practice here is we are not going to use a digital tool. We're going to find this, we're going to calculate by hand, and then you're going to be expected to be able to do this when we come back to the test by next week. So let's practice. On this slide here, I have some data. I have ordered pairs on my scatter plot here. And I want to know, what is the correlation? So my options are positive, negative, or no, and strong or weak. So I need to describe it using both sets of terms here. Well, if I were to think about a line of best fit, that line of best fit would have a negative slope. So my correlation is negative. And if I see those dots there, it's a pretty strong correlation. Those dots are close to where that line of best fit would be. So my description here would be negative and strong. I have a negative strong correlation. Well, let's draw in that line of best fit. And now I want to calculate the equation of the regression line. So I want to know what is the equation of this line. And so for this specific activity, I'm going to tell you the two points that we would use. But we could do this on Desmos and draw in our line of best fit, and it would calculate the line for us. But what I'm telling you is the points we're going to use to calculate this regression line, I see the ordered pair of 437. And I see that our line crosses through 1123. Those are those tiny blue dots that I put in. And I chose those points on purpose, and you'll see why. It's going to give us nice um, integer values, so it makes it easier to calculate some of these things. Well, if I want to write the equation of the regression line, the first thing I need to do is I need to find the slope. And so I'm going to use my slope formula, which tells me I need to know x1, ooh, x1, y1, and x2, y2. Just talking instead of writing there. There we go. And I'm going to plug them into the formula of y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. When I do that, I find that I get a negative 14 over 7, which simplifies to a slope of negative well, then I need to take my slope and one ordered pair and plug them back into my y equals mx plus b to find that missing b value. So to do that, I know, I'll just use the first ordered pair that I have written. I have 37 equals my slope of negative 2 times my x value of 4 plus my unknown piece. Well, equation solving skills tell me I need to multiply those two values and I get a negative 8 plus b equals 37. To get rid of that negative 8, I add it to both sides, and so I get a value of 45 for b. Well, if I take everything and I put it back together, the equation of my line here, my linear regression, looks like y equals negative 2x plus 45. I can take the information that I'm given, those two ordered pairs, and I can write the entire equation of the line in slope-intercept form. I could then change it to another form if I was asked to, but in this case here, slope-intercept form is going to be the most useful. So now what I want to do is I want to calculate the residuals. And in order to do that, the first thing I need to do is I need to find all of the ordered pairs. If I look at my data, I can figure out the x and y value for each point, and I just put them into the table here. Well, now I want to know the residual. Well, the residual tells me the original value, so the actual data, and then you take away the predicted value. And that gives you a measurement of how far away each point is from the line of fit. If the point is below the line, we would expect that the residual is a negative value. If the point is above the line of fit, it'll have a positive residual value. So I'm going to make another chart here for my x and y values for my predicted x and y. Well, I want to use the same x values because what I'm doing when I'm calculating the residual is I'm comparing, if I can get this drawn in here, it's the predicted value from the line, and I'm measuring how far is it from the actual value. And you can see some of them are going to be very close, and some of them are a little bit farther away. But to do that, I'm going to plug in the x values that I'm given. So I know that the x values are going to be the same. I'll just write them in, 2, 3, 
5, 8, 10, 12, and 14. And now what I need to do is I need to plug each of those x values into the original or to my line of fit equation to figure out what the predicted y value would be at each point. Well, when I plug in 2, I get negative 2 times 2, which is a negative 4 plus 45. So it gives me a value of 41. And negative 6 plus 45 gives me a 39. Negative 10 plus 45 gives me 35. Negative 16 plus 45 is going to give me 29. Negative 20 plus 45 gives me 25. Negative 24 plus 45 gives me 21. And negative 28 plus 45 gives me 17. So now to calculate my residual, I need to compare that original value and the predicted value. So my residual is going to equal my actual y minus my predicted y. Pred er, call it a pred y. My predicted y value. The other way that it's written sometimes in stats is that you might see um, r equals o minus e, so original minus expected. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that actual y value from our data and then subtract our predicted y value. So in the first case here, 38 minus 41 gives us a residual of negative 3. And that makes sense. Our residual is below the line. And if I approximate it with my eyeballs on this thing there, it looks like it's about three spaces below. These spaces are really two, so it's one and a half spaces below. For the next one, again, original is 40 minus predicted of 39. Well, that's a value of positive one. And that makes sense. I see that the dot is above my line of fit. We'll do the same thing, 32 minus 35. 28 minus 29, 22 minus 25, 24 minus 21. Oops, my pen stopped working there. Try again. And 17 minus 17. And that makes sense because I can see that that line of fit goes directly through that last point. So my residuals are these values here. I took the actual data and subtracted my predicted y value. Now in the Desmos activity, it took it one step further and it talked about the r squared value where we squared each of the residuals to find the smallest value. And we know our line of fit is best when that r squared value is as small as possible. Well, in this case here, this is probably not our best line of fit, but we're gonna practice with finding this value. I'm gonna square each of these values here and add them up to find my r squared value. When I do that, if I'm squaring something, a negative times a negative is a positive. So I know that each of these values is going to be positive. And these are squares I can do in my head. The square of the first one is 9 plus 1 squared is 1 plus negative 3 squared is 9 plus 1 squared is 1 plus negative 3 squared is 9 plus 3 squared is 9 plus 0 squared is 0. So in this case, my r squared value would be 1, 2, 4, 9 has 4, 36, 37, 38. Pretty big R squared value. When we were using our Desmos tool, I think the smallest value was found by Gavin, and it was a value of 8 point something. So we would want a better R squared value probably, but that also tells us that our data is farther spread out in this version of data than it was in the Desmos activity. Interesting little side note, this part D here is not on the test, but because it was in the Desmos activity, I wanted to talk about it again. You will be expected to know how to calculate the residual. If I give you a line of fit or if I give you two points for a line of fit, you should be able to walk through each of the steps to find those residual values. Last thing I want to talk about on this um, little extra video here is in the chapter four boot camp, there is a section on linear regressions, and so you're using a different digital tool, and it has a couple different spots to click. So I want to make sure that you know how to do it. And most of you guys do a great job of clicking on that little question mark, finding the example videos or example problems, but I'm just going to show it to you real quick. So in your linear regressions, it'll have a problem that looks something like this, where it'll give you a situation, and it'll ask you to find some information. 
first thing you'll need to do is you're going to need to copy the values for the calculator. And then you're going to open the statistics calculator. It's a tool that looks similar to the Desmos tool, a little bit different. When you open the calculator, it'll look like this. It'll have that stats calculator opened, and you're going to paste the values into the table. When you paste them in, it'll look something like this. This was the example data from the last slide. And then you're going to click on that edit lists option. And it'll take you to this page here. Well, not quite. It'll take you to where you can choose calc menu from the options in the main menu. In the sub menu, you're going to need to choose the linear regression, linear regression of AX plus B. So that tells you that it's writing a regression in the form Y equals MX plus B, which is the type that we care about in this situation. You can ignore the diagnostic. It'll be off automatically. When you click calculate, it'll give you your results in a box like this here. And A we've talked about is M. Same thing, different letter to hold the spot. You have your M value and your B value. So you'll need to take those, write them down, and then take it back to that. Uh, if you click at the top tab, it should have opened in a new tab. Click back to Delta Math and you can write the equation of the line. And then you'll need to read the question again because there's a second part to the question where you need to use that equation to make a prediction about a value outside of the range of data. So that's it. That's your little bonus video here on lesson 4.6. Um, by the end of this video now, you should understand how to find the regression, you or to find the residuals with the regression line, and you should understand how to use some of these digital tools. On the test, you will be expected to be able to do the residuals by hand, but you are not calculating the correlation coefficient. If I asked for that, I would give you information. Thanks, guys. I know this is challenging stuff, but you guys are doing some great work here. We have one more day of new material before we get ready for our test next week. Thanks, guys.